Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag IndieBeacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. The following was recorded live at the Book Nook Inn. It is played in its entirety, and we thank you for listening and learning about this great little bed and breakfast for writers. You guys created Book Nook. Why did you create such a place? Oh, this place here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, actual inn? Well, there, there was a need. We felt there was a need for bed and breakfast around here, but we also wanted to target um, authors and people reading books and doing the reviews and that kind of thing. We wanted to bring more of a culturized type of people to this area um, and to help with David's books, too. That was another thing, too. We thought that would help bring an interest to, you know, the writing environment. And... So originally you created the house. Yes. Um, and, and it was for you to live, for your kids to live, yeah, and all right. that fun mm-hmm. stuff. Yes. So when did you decide to add on the extras from you guys? Oh, thank, thank, you. You. Um, thank you. When when did we... Six, seven years ago? Yeah. yeah About 2012? We, well, we've been open seven years, so... As a bed and breakfast. As a bed and breakfast. Yeah. Um, and then so, about two years later, well, probably even less than that, we started talking about... She said we got to have a place for doing weddings, and we started building... The event, the, the event the area in, in the additional two rooms. So, how many rooms total are there? Because on the website it looks like there's four, but there's, there's really a lot more. No, okay. there's, there's only five. Well, five. we have five rooms that we do for the bed and breakfast, but we have a lot of common areas that we that yeah, all together. There's 17 rooms all together, but five bedrooms. Yes, that, that, are, that we rent out. That we rent for the bed and breakfast. So you have the weddings, and you do have other types of groups that come in. Oh, yeah. We do. We do retreats. We do reunions. We do birthday parties. We do baby we showers. We even do trial. Uh, uh, we even do big trials there. We've done that. Trials. Yes. Yes. We have had lawyers that come in. And they have two juries. Uh, they advertise around here to get the, the cream of the crop here for juries, and they present their, their case one way out in the big room. Then they present their case another way. And, and they try to determine which way they need to present the real case in this particular county on the real trial. Okay. So dummy trials. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, we've had those here. Those are pretty neat. Um, and we, we've had, like, we're going to have a corporate party here, what, in a week or two? When is it? A couple weeks. A couple yeah. weeks. Christmas parties are all coming up. So. And plenty of weddings coming up. Plenty of weddings coming up. Yes. Plenty, plenty. And we have... A need yeah. for a wedding venue. <laughs> and Pete, yeah, and they have birthday parties here, Sweet 16 birthday parties where the kid gets a brand new car. You know? <laughs> so. so the idea of the book Nook, yeah. the, you know, bringing writers in really hasn't happened so much. I mean, you do get some from time to time, but right. that seems to have ended up being your minor business. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we actually... Uh, tried to solicit for authors coming in, and, we, and we've had writers come here and stay here and write their books actually yeah. uh, quite a few times because uh, that's what we hope to accomplish. But uh, but we don't reject people who just are flying in from China and need a place to stay because they're going to the big thicket, you yeah, know, that the, kind of a thing. We, we, yeah. we take whatever, you know, yeah, business is business, us, yeah, yeah right. business is business, but we, we have tried to. Uh, get more involved with the people who write books and to have them feel like this is a place that they can come and it's calm and they can sit in their room or sit outside and sit out in our garden of good and evil and, and write, you know. Um, and, and for some it's been a, they claim it very conducive that they've been able to finish their, their work or, or really get going in their, their book. We had a lady staying in this room. Remember that? She's. Uh, we we had one in the cabin actually. That she was here for like mm-hmm. two weeks. Yeah. Did not like her book, but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, she did finish her book here, and uh, um, 
and she wrote about the area. That was one of the things. She didn't write, well, she was writing about the area. She was writing about religion. And she used uh, parts of the area around here as examples of how people think. And I don't think she was very fair in it. But, well, you know, uh, and she was writing in, in a university press. So, so that was, you know, the gospel was according to her of how people in this area are, how they think. So, um, but so we, you just had the um, second annual Pincraft, which was actually the first dinner yeah. um, awards banquet that you just did. Um, what motivated you to create the author's reviews and oh, to the, do the, the Pincraft? I, the reviews, I just felt like most of those companies are outrageously high. They do, again, I really find it wrong to have one person make this judgment on a book and that's supposed to represent to the world how good that book is. I, I just think, um, you know, I, I got great reviews, so, you know, but I see reviews that somebody paid $300, $400 for because they wanted it really quick and the, and, and the reviewer writes terribly anyways and then they then they say bad negative things about the book which will not help it one iota really as far as I'm concerned and and I don't think it's a it's not even a fair thing it's it's just not it's, it, it is not giving the, the reading audience out there what that book really is about and whether giving them the, the ability to really decide whether they'd want it or not because they're talking more about their own personal feelings in the book, not about what the book is about. And I, I want to talk about what the book is about, not how I disagree with what they're saying or, or their politics are wrong or it's about a subject that I think is you know disgusting or whatever. I, it, it, what is that book about? And not my uh, commentary on, on how it... I disagree with it. And you have several people that yeah. do the reviews. Yeah. So, of the people that I've, I've recently met, do they all read the same book and give a review, or do they mix uh, it they, around they, based they, on what their preference is? Um, we divvy them up. We divvy, yeah, we divvy we them do. up. Some of them want real physical books. Some of them will prefer, I, you know, the online. Yeah, audio, the e-book yeah. Yeah, versions. And it depends a lot of times on what we get, or audiobooks or whatever. Uh, how how they go, and the, I do personally review every review that comes in, and and I usually add or take away things that I think are yeah. indicating their preference. I, I try to take that all out. I don't want any of that. I don't want. And I read them all too. Yeah, I don't want <laughs> an, an Alan to say, but this book I totally disagree with it. But anyways, I, I was forced to to write this review. And if I, you don't want to write the review. Don't write the review. Just right. don't waste our time doing it. Let's find somebody that can read it and, you know, and, and do something halfway decent with it. Or if it's so terrible, like we did have one book that was just terrible and uh, we just couldn't do it, you know. Um, and then, then we had uh, one where I, I was almost to the point where I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. And, it was, uh, and, and I just felt like it needed to be edited a lot more. Uh, and I did talk to him about it. The story was really a good story. The writer was horrible. It, too, it could have been a good movie because the way the woman was telling it was just like you and me talking. And uh, so she wasn't correcting any, anything. It was like, this is it. I've, I've told my story and uh, sitting on the porch telling my story about what I did in my life and, and this is how it goes, you know, and oh yeah, I forgot to tell you this too, by the way, and this is something else that happened too. So uh, it was written really weird, and a lot of cuss words in it, and she was a woman who actually um, had been a prostitute, and she had said that she was proud of what she had been doing, and her mother was one too, and then finally she met a man who changed her life all around. So that was the good part of it. And, um, you know, that was one that I really... I was trying to figure out how to actually talk about it in a way that it sounded... Because it was interesting, but as far as a piece of literature, it was terrible. <laughs> about how many books do you guys get per year? Oh, a couple hundred books in, in, in a year. And then hopefully in the future, I can 
we can do a lot more actually. We gotta get the biggest thing we need is more readers mm -hmm. than we do yeah. books. We we keep having an issue with finding quality readers that right. can write halfway decent about what the book is about. I was trying to I try to help myself because I, I feel like I have a good method myself. And I do have one that I love right now. In fact she was there last night who who reads. And and, and yeah, she's the yeah, she's the woman who won the uh yeah, she won the free gift night. Gift. Here. And not only that, her mother is 100 years old and she's going to be staying here. Okay. Is that something? The, um, once you've gone through and done the reviews, mm -hmm. you enter it into the Pencraft Awards. Yes. What is the determining factor to be entered into that? Well, every, everything goes into it. Automatic. Everything either from the Pencraft Award website where people can just send us books and we'll look at them. We don't do a review on them unless they win. And the other one, authorsreading.com, we those they're paying for a review and everyone that we do there goes into the Pencraft Award uh, uh, submissions submissions yes yeah, so, so that we can actually go from there and, and, and you know at that, that particular time I mean they're open for submission I mean not everyone we're going to really look at in the future because we've already looked at it and said no this is okay but not that great you know and then we go through this whole deal later all of us looking at them and using certain numbers based upon what well, like I said before uh, we, we want to look at Amazon we want to see if they're listed in Barnes & Noble where they there's a rating in Barnes & Noble too where you as an author or excuse me the book is rated so if you're not there I know you're not selling many books and then of course the number you know what your rating is if you go one star and that's it and uh, you've only had one person review your book you probably have not sold many books and I don't know whether I want to be promoting a book that no one seems to want to read or you don't want them to read because you're not promoting it so so that's a huge determination and we give actually 25% I think it's 20 or 25% towards that whole piece right there just whether you're selling or not so if you're not selling you already lost 25% of the score. Of our score. And your cost for the reviews is how much right now? Um, they go from uh, 59 to 129, 139, I think. 129. 129, or 139, which we will be going up pretty soon, but we're going to hold off a little And the price off. difference is based on what? A length of time it takes before we get the review out. Yeah. You know, if they want to wait, you know, three to seven weeks, that's one price, that's the cheapest price, but if they want it in two weeks, then it's our most expensive price. So, and, and um, you know, we get, we probably get more of the 59s, that's for sure. And then, you know, we also run little discounts occasionally too during the year where we give a percentage off. Um, and I advertise on quite a few different places too. I, I don't know, are you fam familiar with Share a Sale? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a affiliate organization that actually people can go and put our banners out there and, and promote us from their site. Like you, know, like you could put one of our banners there and if you, in fact, someone came to your site and decided to click on our banner and then um, within the next 60 or 90 days, whatever, did a review, sent us the money for a review, then you had made yourself 10 bucks, I think it would, would have been for the $59. It was, it was like... I think 20% that we were given the person who sent us that particular review. Okay. The um, amount of winners, there was 11 last night. Yeah, um, we actually had 46 altogether. 46 winners. Yeah. And that's first place, second place, and, and honorable mention? Yeah. But we, we had, again, a lot of times I felt like there was no, we had a lot more genres than that. Yeah, in different but, categories. But I didn't feel like there was people... The, the, the books we didn't have any books that I felt like they were that great for some of these genres that we had and um, and then also the problem is some people put their books under the wrong thing if you ask me but again I, it's very difficult to call them up and say especially if they come through a, a publisher and I don't know why the publishers do that um, why they put the person in for something that when you read the book this isn't about that you know it should have been under this other genre so, you know, we run into that issue, too. And if, they, if that, that's what they put it under, then 
that's what we leave it as, you know. I, I have had them corrected a few times where they realized that they had screwed up, right. you know, but, it, but I, it's not my job to go out and say, hey, Alan, you know, this book you gave me does not fit under this particular category at all. Right. So. And Stacy, what do you see for the future of the book note? Well, <laughs> more business. <laughs> more business, hopefully. Um, you know, I just want it to keep growing. I want it to keep doing what it's doing and flourishing and more events, more of these type of events because I love this. This is great. Um, you know, just keep doing what we're doing and plugging along. And Will you guys be adding any more rooms oh, or anything? No. no. No, we're not adding any more rooms. We, we wanted to, but actually the, the way the law is in this particular yeah, area is that if you have more than five rooms, then you have to start... Uh, um, all the handicap rules apply to you then, and we'd have to have an elevator here or escalator, or and then we'd have to get rid of a lot of the kinds of handles, the brown handles, the glass handles here. We'd have to get rid of them because you're gonna have a lever, something or just something where a person can just push on and open right. the door. And I, I like my glass doorknobs and, and you know these pretty old things that we got here, so. Uh, we don't want to do that. And and then where do you put an elevator here that would look halfway decent or an escalator? Mm -hmm. I don't want something, you know, where a person sits on it and runs up and down my yeah. stairs. So we couldn't do it. And I'd have to have one out there too on the tower. So so we can't do that. Huh. But uh, but I but even with the five rooms, it's it's still you know great. And we, and we do want to do more types of events. That's you know a big deal that that. Uh, they're they're fun, uh, tiring sometimes, but uh, but they're, they're you know you meet a lot of very neat people, and it feels good you know to make these people happy. So, you know, I I was really glad that these people seemed to really like our event last night that were involved in. It. I mean, we got people from all over. I mean, mm -hmm. Connecticut. I mean, New York. <laughs> I mean, California, Washington, Florida. Uh, Kansas, or where, where did the one guy come from? Someplace up north, middle of the country. I drive, drove down here, I mean, and, and I felt like uh, they all were happy with the, what they've done. So, um, so yeah, we like them. Okay. People can get the reviews at authorsreading.com? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's booknookin.com for yes. the better breakfast. Mm -hmm. And it's pincraftaward.com for oh, the awards. awards. Either way, you're going to find the same place. So, okay. Any words of encouragement for writers you want to throw in? Yeah, I, I uh, think the time is right for authors who, who want to go the indie way and, and, and get their books uh, out there and just got to have... People like you, Alan, that uh, help them promote them because that's the most important part. Once you've written that book, you've got a lot more to do <laughs> than just simply writing it. Yeah. But don't write it if you're not going to promote it because you've wasted your time and, and, and the whole idea of writing is to educate other people about whatever your issues are or whatever your story is. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell think, your uh, story. Yeah, tell your story and make sure people get to read it. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you, Alan. Thank you. Howdy. I'm John Cruder, the Midnight Marauder. I guess you might say that I'm a vigilante who writes the wrongs I see along my many travels to balance the scales of justice, especially those of the corrupt and murderous members of the town council of Bandera, Texas. You can follow my many adventures in a series of Midnight Marauder books written by Roy Clinton on Amazon.com and TopWesterns.com. Or, if you prefer, listen to my adventures in audiobook form by downloading them from audible.com or iTunes. This is R. William James, the voice of the Midnight Marauder. Texas Authors is proud to be a supporter of IndieBeacon.com, a website that supports indie authors from around the world. If you are looking for help with marketing or getting published, IndieBeacon.com can assist you. Years of experience by the founder is available to any indie author looking for help. IndieBeacon.com, 
a place for creative souls to find help in marketing their creations. Headlines. Cryptocurrency vultures are circling around failing governments. Darknet predators are rushing to market with their newest digital product. They promise economic salvation, even as they coupon clips straight from your digital wallet. The newest techno thriller installment from Breakfield and Berkey, The Enigma Source. Book 10 of the Enigma series continues the combat of cyber good guys versus cyber thugs set in today's digital landscape. Do you love to read great new ebooks? Visit ebg247.com. Be the first to discover the next bestseller. At EBG247, we have the web's largest selection of great new book reads, from that amazing new fiction or nonfiction to horror, romance, and fantasy. We even have today's best children's books. That's ebg247.com. New books arrive daily, and all ebooks start at just 99 cents. If you love to read, then you'll love EBG247. Dot com. Low prices, large selection, and an easy-to-use website. It's all only at ebg247.com. I am Grace Allison Blair, an award-winning author, motivational speaker, and modern mystic. I have combined spiritual and psychological principles in my non-fiction self-help books under Grace Allison and fiction books under Grace Blair. Go to modernmysticmedia.com to find Do You Have a Dream? Five Keys to Realize Your Dream and my novel Einstein's Compass, a YA time traveler adventure. Well, hello there, my friends. My name is Randy James, independent voiceover producer in the Dallas, Texas area, available to write and record a 30-second commercial much like the one you're hearing right now. It's a great way to help increase awareness and exposure to your book title. It's easy to do. Simply call me and we'll brainstorm on a few ideas, and in a few hours, I'll whip something up and send you a digital file ready to use. Remember, call or text me, Randy James, at 214-762-1942. Have you ever thought what you would do if you had to put your life on hold to parent your parents? Charlotte Cannon has lived the journey caring for three parents with dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's. Her book, You Have to Laugh to Keep from Crying, How to Parent Your Parents, is a survival guide for adult children caring for aging seniors. Her book is available at books.txauthors.com, Amazon, or your favorite bookstore. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website at IndieBeacon.com.